Hi, this is Shamika Copeland, and you're watching 101.9 Kink Radio in the Skype Live studio. Give it up, everybody. Give it up. Look at all these smiles you put on these faces. That's what you do. That's the best part about the job. That's it. Welcome back to the West Coast. Oh, it's wonderful to be here. Oh, Thank we, you. We absolutely. We, we love it. And the road's been good to you very quickly so far? Yes, yes. I mean, we managed to stay safe and healthy, so we're doing all right. Well, it's hardcore getting back out after the holidays so quick, too, right? I know, right? Yeah, Especially yeah. all on sweet potato pies. That's <laughs> well, tough. Got, you got to pull yourself away yeah. from the food and friends Fine. and family. Try right? to dance a little bit more on stage to shake it off, you know? <laughs> Shake off that pie. Oh, you're doing so good, man. And, and I told you backstage, you and I go back. We've never really formally met, but it was about 18 years ago. She played the Mount Hood Festival of Jazz on the Friday Blues Night with Gatemouth Brown, and she also had James Cotton there, and I think Lloyd Jones was a part of that show. I remember introducing you. I remember Turn, I turned the Heat Up. I just thought it was a fantastic album. We all, oh, yeah, this is great. Oh, look at Johnny's baby girl. He's doing, <laughs> she's doing, and then I remember, I don't know how far into the set it was, but this blew me away, and I'll remember it from till the day I die. I'm walking away, and who has seen Shamika in, in concert, right? You know what she does. She does that thing, ghetto child. I'm at a festival, a festival. This woman walks out onto the apron, and I'm literally like 100 yards away. We had walked away from the stage, and the whole place went silent. And I'm wondering, what is going on? But I hear somebody doing something pretty nice and beautiful in the background. They were all quiet to you singing on the apron. And it was the most powerful moment with your voice and your talent oh, coming through. Thank you. And what were you? Your baby girl about <laughs> 18, 19? <laughs> what makes you, where did this come from where all of a sudden you're like, all right, I'm in a fest in front of thousands of people. I don't need that mic. I don't need this PA system. Watch what I can do. Where did that come from? No, I think it's more like just an old school church thing. You know, you want to forget about the PA and forget about the, you know, the, the, I don't know trapping, what I'm trying trapping. to say. Yes. <laughs> and take it back to the beginning where there was none of that, and it was just you and the people, you know. And I, I like doing that, and I've been doing that for 20 years, so, yeah. Well, <laughs> and you also, you started, and I'm sure every interviewer that talks to you talks about your dad. You started with him up on stage, but so it wasn't really a gospel background for you, was it? No, no. My first gig was at the Cotton Club. That's great. Mm -hmm. I was like nine years old, and my daddy, I got in trouble actually because I was supposed to be at home with my brother. Uh -huh. And um, the cotton club, and I was supposed to be behaving myself, and uh, but I was being a pain in the, you know what, and uh, my brother got all pissed off and called my mom, and uh, my mom came to pick me up. And it was punishment for me because I wanted to hang out at the house and be annoying to my brother and his friends. But uh, she made me put on a dress. Uh. That's first punishment. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, you're coming with me. So then we walk over to the Cotton Club, which was just like a few blocks away from where I lived at the time. Uh. And um, so I'm sitting there in the audience and my dad sees me. And he starts playing the song that we always do around the house. And at that point, I knew he was going to bring me up and... I don't know. I just, I was like, I wanted to cry, but I was up there and I went up there with my daddy and I was singing. The video is hilarious because you see me nervous and, and then finally I start to open up a little bit and I sing this song called Stingy. I got a guy as sweet as he can be. The only fault he's got that I can see is he's too stingy. Stingy with the love for me. <laughs> at nine years at old. Nine, yeah. At nine years old. He wrote that song for me. I was talking about my daddy, though, at that yeah, time. Oh, yeah. That's good stuff. Great memories, for sure. <laughs> All right, so you heard her just play Outskirts of Love. It's the title track to the new album. Kind of like uh, Circle, Full Circle. Uh, did Bruce come to you and kind of say, please, come back? <laughs> <laughs> well, we have She's good, on Alligator Records is what I'm trying to say. She's back good, with Alligator. Yeah, we have a good mutual relationship. I mean, we work together on other projects after I was off Alligator, and... Uh, we just, you know, we're talking about it, and it just happened. It worked out perfectly, so now it I'm back sounds, home. It sounds great. And you brought Chris also, Chris Wood, back. Yes, yeah. he was, yep. So he. this was the third record that he produced on me, Oliver Wood. Uh, Oliver, Oliver, I'm sorry, not Chris. Chris is his brother. Yes, yeah. Yeah. in fact, we just had <laughs> him on Woods stage, brothers. and they're coming in like a couple of weeks. Yeah. But yeah, Oliver, he's great. Yeah. And I know he's working with Susan Tedeschi and Derek on their new album as well. Oh, great. So it's yeah. good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so the new album. You know what? Let's talk about this, because the new album, third Grammy nomination, right? Yeah. Third, mm -hmm. 
All right. I'm going to bring one, that sucker home What is this it? Time. Thank you? I'm bringing that sucker home. I was wondering, did you like knock some knees or maybe pay somebody <laughs> off? I was like, I don't know. Because let me see. Who's this buddy guy you're up against? I don't know. That guy. <laughs> that guy. Who is that buddy guy? <laughs> and then, of guy. course, uh, you know, Cedric's album, too. And Betty Lovett, I'm sorry, but she truly, to me, you know. We did a gig here. And um, some many, many years ago, it was me, her, and Marsha Ball who did a gig here in Portland. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 Mm. Betty's got yeah. the stuff. But, mm -hmm. yeah, you're in good company. And, uh, boy, I hope, I hope good things for you because, yeah, third time is a charm. So bring that bad boy in. You know what? I'm just going to find some other things up with you. Dr. John or Steve Cropper, who's the uh, more awesome? <laughs> <laughs> that is so unfair. I know it is. <laughs> Jeez. No, I love them both. Yeah, um, I really do. I had a great time working with both of them. Um, and they're just so different because Dr. John's like super laid back, you know, with the candles and everything. And then Steve Pretty Cropper great. is like, you know, a five-year-old boy with the energy. You know what I mean? Because okay. he's just got like so much of it. I mean, he was dancing the whole while. Not that, not that Mac didn't do some dancing too, but uh, he still moves. But anyway, he still moves. Yeah, yeah. that's but good. It was but both of them were both great experiences. And you brought your father's music back to this album. You've even got ZZ Top, and we were just talking about Cedric Burnside being up against uh, up against you for the Grammy. Uh, Jessie May, you also played some of her music. I'm glad yeah, that, Jessie you know, Mayer. bring her, yeah, bring a little bit more of that into the light, too. I'm glad when artists like yourself that could play the festivals, but you bring some of the the unknown music and the unknown artists to a little bit more of the forefront, that's always good. Yeah, because uh, nobody knows Easy Top. I know, right? Well, <laughs> that one's a little bit. And Billy, <laughs> Billy was working with you on the, Billy was he played, in, the, yeah, was he in the same studio or was this <laughs> something played, you sent to him? He, no, he did it for me uh, elsewhere because he's always traveling all over everywhere. But, uh, but he did it and I was really grateful to him for it. He's a great guy. Well, thank you so much for being here because I know this thank is your only gig us. today, right? That, yes, it so is. So, what are you doing tonight in a town that I can't looks like tell that you outside? That. Uh -huh. Come on now. This girl's got to keep some secrets. <laughs> You're going to find some of that sweet potato pie, and I'm going <laughs> to tempt you. Well, if you have sweet potato pie, then I'm coming to see <laughs> you. We're going to meet. Excellent. Tomorrow night, she is at Jimmy Max, guys. I mean, it's like truly a ticket or two sold out away, all right? So if you want to get them, get them soon. New album, Outskirts of Love, we'll have some for you after this. Can we get some more music? Yes, you can. Put your hands together, Shamika Copeland.